above. That's what makes this tournament so great. Here's our bracket in the upper left portion of the bracket. Regional one going to Albany. South Carolina is the number one overall seed. They will play at today at two Eastern against Presbyterian over on ESPN. But right now we've got Michigan State and North Carolina. Let's go, tournament time continues today. Courtney Lyle alongside the Hall of Famer, Carolyn Peck. And how lucky are we we get to start with the 8-9 matchup? Oh, we got a lot of good games today. But this is my favorite round, the 8-9 matchup. Two of the closest teams that are battling out to try to advance to play on Sunday. Yeah, well, let's take a look at today's most reliable player. It's brought to you by Xfinity. And if you're talking North Carolina, you got to go Deja Kelly, right? Oh, Deja Kelly brings the flash. She brings the flair. Now, her whole career at North Carolina, she's tried to move over and play that two guard but because of injuries she runs the point she runs it well she does a terrific job of pushing pace getting in the paint and getting to the free throw line and she's going to have to be a tremendous leader for the Tar Heels today to advance she has started all but one game of her career third straight season she's been a first team all ACC selection and whatever the Tar Heels need she is willing to step up to the challenge on the other side, a new look Michigan State team, Julia Arolt, working underneath the basket this time for Michigan State. And look at her points per game improvement. 11.8 more points per game than last season. Change of position has, has really worn well on Arolt. Playing inside, playing the center position for the Spartans, but she also has the ability to shoot the three. The new system has allowed her to use the variety of her games, and she's going to have to bring it today. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. Peck, I know you love Dee Dee Hageman. Dee Dee Hageman is going to bring excitement. She's going to bring a feistiness to the court. She pushes in transition, and playing with speed, it all is based on watching number zero in green. And for North Carolina, Alyssa Usby, she's going to be that blue collar worker that UNC's got to have today. Blue collar, and she's like a Swiss Army knife. You're going to see her play a number of positions today. She'll defend in the post. She'll defend on the perimeter. She'll bring it in transition. She can do a little bit of everything. What is the biggest challenge for North Carolina today? Controlling pace. They have to control the pace because Michigan State likes to shoot it quick in the shot clock and then set up a full court press. If you have not watched Michigan State, you are in for a treat this year. North Carolina, and they immediately get the ball over to Deja Kelly, number 25 in white. Michigan State in a man-to-man -man defense. They're going to try to gap it. They want to keep the ball out of the paint. Julia Aron with a little deflection underneath. But she's got to be careful now because she's the only size that Michigan State has, and they cannot afford her to get into foul trouble. Inbound Alexi Donarski, the Iowa State transfer. And India Navarro takes the shot. She was moved into the starting lineup for this game. Hageman with a turnover off her foot. And Navarro moved into the starting lineup, I believe, to match up with the quickness and handle the basketball against Michigan State's full court pressure. So you see Deja Kelly setting things up again. She's had to play more point guard this year due to injuries. Usby looking to go inside to Maria Gokting. And she is fouled. And we mentioned it. Julia Arald has got to be very careful underneath. That's her first. And North Carolina very intentional, patient to get the ball inside. Usby has the shot there, but she denies it and looks for Gokdang down low. North Carolina has had a 15-day break. That is their longest of the season. They exited early from that ACC tournament, lost in the second round in their first game to Miami by a point. It's a long time to think about that. Well, there's good news and bad news. Yeah, they got eliminated from the ACC tournament, but the rest that they need because there's a shortened roster for North Carolina. Here's Arold at the free throw line. And North Carolina, they're in that sagging man defense as well, but you can't sag too much because Michigan State likes to shoot the three. And that is normally a good shot for Arold. They're fine with her taking that, just a little too much, the adrenaline pumping. And Joyner and Kelly going on the perimeter. That's a great matchup. Back ding. Nice defense from Arold. The transition defense for North Carolina, that's got to be at a premium today. 
Didi Hageman trying to go inside to A-Roll, but she's picked up her dribble. Fighting her way to the bucket, Jocelyn Tate, the transfer from Bowling Green. That's the first on Gokding. Michigan State's going to hunt ways to get the ball into the paint. If you can score it, great. If not, they want the defense to rotate in. That'll open up their three-point shots. Well, Michigan State comes into this game having won five of its last six games. They lost to Nebraska in the Big Ten quarterfinals. But Courtney, get ready, because if Michigan State scores it, they're going to pick, pick up full court pressure. They are sixth in the nation in points per game, and then they love, like you said, that defense. Lexi Donarski, known for a great shot and a great defender. You saw Espy on the glass. She just continues to work. Number one in white. Dr. Ding got the paint to herself with A-Roll over the top. Gokting averages nine points a game. She's already got five. She could get in double digits today because isolation, she's got the size advantage inside. That's going to be an offensive foul on Moira Joyner. Well, Courtney Banghart in her fifth season, she has brought this North Carolina team its fourth straight NCAA tournament appearance. And she told us during that 15-day break, they got to spend time on themselves because you don't know who your opponent's going to be. And that's rare that you get that time where it's just the focus is on you. Well, you got a little break. You can get away from each other. Then you go back to work on yourselves. And that's, I think that's the key thing to do in that timeout is you got to regroup. Get the re hit the reset button as you approach the NCAA tournament. If we had a 15-day break, would you need time away from me? I would miss you tremendously, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa Usby continued to watch her. Her game is so strong. Robin Freilich wanted an offensive foul on that one. She took off down the sideline. Laura Joyner back out to Jocelyn Tate. And that's going to be touched by North Carolina. Alyssa Usby, talk about the different things that she can do. The rip and take to the left, finish. That's strong. All ACC second team selection, a finalist for the Cheryl Miller Award. She started every game the last three seasons. There's a good reason why. Look, and the steal by Usby there. Right away from Tori Osmond. North Carolina doesn't look to have any rust from having those 15 days off. Navarre driving, kicking, and an offensive foul. Tori Osmond steps up and takes the charge. That one going against India Navarre. Well, Robin Freilich is in her first season coaching Michigan State. She's the first coach to lead Michigan State to an NCAA tournament in their debut season. She spent five seasons as the head coach of Bowling Green, and boy, has she made this such an exciting team to watch, not just offensively. They got that defense in there, too. The system that she has brought to Michigan State is one that look, fans want to pay to come and watch. They shoot it, and then they get into that full court pressure. They, they've got to see the ball go through the hoop right now to get in order to get that set. The kick out to Joyner. That's what they needed, hitting the three. Moira Joyner, she's their leading three-point shooter. Michigan State makes a little over nine threes a game. Navarre avoiding the offensive foul call. Two looks at it as Tiani Key tries to put back the rebound, but misses. Into the corner from Theron Halleck. Ospie all the way. That's beautiful basketball in transition. As soon as North Carolina got it, Ospie got out of the gates with a quickness. That was India Navarre that got a hand on that, forced the turnover. Usby has help over to Navarre. 
Alyssa Usby told us they are at their best when they're sharing the basketball and it's balanced scoring. The intensity that North Carolina has brought. Yes, they are scoring on the offensive end, but defensively, they have been on point today. Offensive foul on Jocelyn Tate. We mentioned it when we come back. Robin Freilich and her improvements with the Spartans. We'll see how they compare to last year on the other side. CAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Starting off the first round here in Columbia, South Carolina with the 8-9 matchup, Michigan State and North Carolina. Robin Freilich in her first season leading the Spartans. They are back in the tournament for the first time since 2021. And now for today's Need to Know, it's brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Look at the offensive improvement from last season to this season. All is it all stems around the system that Robin Freilich has brought in. It's free motion, really organized chaos, screening, cutting, penetrating, and setting each other's up. And then on the defensive side, they also are bringing this full court pressure. They're going to need to get some of that offense going today because it's been North Carolina that came out that has been the dominant defensive team and producing on the offensive side. And North Carolina is getting a lot of points in the paint. They're plus eight in the paint right now. Breaking the press here, Alyssa Usby down the middle. Usby already at six points. She averages 12 a game, so halfway there. And what is North Carolina doing? Breaking the press, not just breaking it to set up an offense, but break the press to score. So what are they doing to stop and slow down Michigan State's defense or offense right now? Offensively, they are in gaps. They're not getting out of position. They're not having to over rotate to give up open looks. There was a little tumble under the basket between Usby and Arold, but both get up. Tiani Key with the rebound and the putback. He is giving North Carolina good minutes with Scott Gang on the bench. It's a busy weekend for the Key family. Her sister Tamari Key will be playing for Tennessee against Green Bay tomorrow in Raleigh. Their mom, Tammy Brown, is in the stands here. Going to drive the three hours back to see Tennessee play. That's an offensive foul against Julia Aral, her second. There's Tiani's mom. Tammy Brown, we mentioned it, you said she's she's here today. After this game, she's driving about three hours to Raleigh to see Tennessee and her other daughter, Tamari Key, play tomorrow. They live about seven minutes from the University of uh, North Carolina State. So when Tamari got in last night, she went and saw Tamari. She drove here. She's going to spend time with the baby, with the baby with girl. Tiani. And then she'll go back for that game. She's putting some miles on that car. If only they had frequent driver miles. <laughs> <laughs> I think she would like to have a driver. Yeah. Period. 8-0 <laughs> run for North Carolina. They've hit their last three buckets. Pass intercepted by Abby Kimball. Up ahead to Hageman. And she's fouled going into the basket by Sydney Barker. North Carolina had to approach this game understanding how many points Michigan State produces that they had to get out to a good start. And North Carolina has, look, that's a terrific game plan. You have to, you have to deliver the first punch in the Tar, Heel, Tar Heels app. Yeah, when you're facing a team like Michigan State who is sixth in the nation in points per game, there's no margin of error to get behind early. This is Didi Hageman at the line. Now, Michigan State, you cannot be, get beat over the top. That's the most important thing in this press. Make North Carolina have to set up their offense. And North Carolina plus seven in the paint right now. Got things back in the game. Oh, excuse me. They have 14 paint points. Michigan State has seven total points. Usby will take it. She's up to eight. 
when you're playing against a team that pressures you, full court press, you can't panic late in the shot clock. Pass stolen away by Navarre. And it's going to be North Carolina basketball as Moira Joyner has just whistled for her second foul. Navarre being moved into the starting lineup for North Carolina, I think that was a great move. She has been an asset on the offensive end, but defensively, you saw her there. And just the hustle. It's She's bringing it on the floor because she can play multiple positions. Transferring in, I think it's a great addition to North Carolina. Yeah, it came in from Stanford. She was actually the North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. So she is back in her home state. This is the first. Well, the NCAA Women's Championship continues today with the first round games and goes all the way through April 7th when we crown a champion. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Make sure your iPad is charged. Absolutely. And your laptop. Yeah, you're logged in. You're ready to go. That's why I'm so happy we have the first game, first two games, and then we can go watch games the rest of the day. Best time of the year. Tori Osment trying to step around Gokting, but misses. Deja Kelly wide open for the three, a little too much. Another chance this time, Donarski. North Carolina is locked in. Wow. Three-second call on Tori Osmond. North Carolina scoring in so many different ways. They've gone in the paint and then off an offensive rebound. Lexi Donarski lines it up and knocks down the three. How big of a get was Lexi Donarski? She spent three seasons at Iowa State. She was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year back in 2022. But also, I mean, that three-point shot is so pure. She is the total package. When you can get a player into Courtney Banghart's system that will defend and has the ability to shoot the three, that's like striking gold. She's got one more season with the Tar Heels. And there's going to be an offensive foul on Maria Gokding, her second. Julia Arault is back in the game for Michigan State. She's got those two fouls, talking about number 40 in green. In the Big Ten tournament, she picked up two early fouls. Like, what did she learn, and how was she able to play disciplined enough to stay on the floor? She was so important for them, had to move to the five due to injuries. They don't have a ton of depth down low. Here's Aralt. Stuffed by Osby! And the ball movement so pure inside to Gokting. 16 to 2 run. There's going to be a foul underneath the basket. This one on Usby. North Carolina running in transition like a well oiled machine. Once they get the basketball, you saw Gokden get out of the picture. She's already down the floor. Nobody inside for 6 3, 6 4. The easy finish. Theron Halleck is at the free throw line right now for Michigan State. Keep in mind, their first quarter low in a season this year is 14 points, and they only have seven right now. That has everything to do with North Carolina's defense. North Carolina has taken care of the basketball. They have handled the press, and they have been able to get the ball inside at will. Tar Heels have hit four of their last five. Courtney Banghart getting her starters some rest to end this first quarter. Except for Deja Kelly. Well, she doesn't need rest. <laughs> she doesn't get rest. <laughs> Taken away by Halleck. 
and Michigan State needed that desperately. Tiani Key with the luck, but it won't go. North Carolina plus 13 in the first quarter, looking so comfortable in the tournament. When we come back, flashing back to North Carolina's national championship season. It's time now for Get More, brought to you by GEICO. Two-point Louisiana Tech lead. Seven tenths remains. Let it all come down to this one final play. Here's the shot, Charlotte Smith. North Carolina's Tar Heels, for the first time, are the champions of women's basketball. One point's all you need, right? That was back in 1994, North Carolina's first appearance in the Final Four. They made it to the national championship. They won that national championship game. They're back in the tournament this year under Courtney Banghart for the 31st time. I was at that game in 94, and I was sitting up in the second tier up, and when she hit that, I mean, it was like, holy cow! Yes. That's the watered-down version of what you said. Well, you know, <laughs> it's early. We're barely at noon. Yeah. <laughs> North Carolina 7-0 when leading by double figures at the end of the first quarter. They are up 13. Moira Joyner connects on a three, just the second made three for Michigan State. They average nine a game. They're going to need more of that Michigan State is because the defense of North Carolina in that first quarter was stifling. Only three field goals for Michigan State. Well, the rotation was there for North Carolina. They were able to take some offensive fouls or draw some charges. And then running in transition was a beautiful thing for North Carolina. Here's Anya Poole working on Arold, who has two fouls. Three seconds. A little short on the turnaround. So what adjustments would you make if you're Michigan State? Moving Arold around, not just keeping her in the paint. She's up at the top of the key as Tate gets stuck. Joiner, the kick out to Halleck. Swatted away by Poole. Just the rotation, the team defense of North Carolina has been so good. Holding Michigan State to shooting just 33%. Julia Aralt. Telling you, no lead is safe when you're playing Michigan State because of their ability to shoot the three. They're on a 9-0 run. seconds for the heels turnover and then Tate is fouled by India Navarre her second I think it was Julia Arald that stuck her hand in there flipped that ball out and the offense for North Carolina they need more size inside that's where you see key come in the game pool just doesn't give that separation like key and get uh, gang do well, that's what Courtney Banghart was talking to us about. They actually do have depth in the post, which is a rare occurrence for her program. Well, she needs depth in the post because she definitely doesn't have it on the perimeter. Now they've lost three McDonald's All-American point guards to injury. Hence why Deja Kelly is back at the point. And that's a travel on Halleck. Now two players with sides for North Carolina with Poole and Key. So they have options. You see a roll and rise, rise action to get a high low. Usby tripped up and a travel. Seven turnovers for North Carolina, eight for Michigan State. Winner. Now 
Winner of this game will get either South Carolina or Presbyterian in the second round. That'll take place on Sunday. We'll get to see South Carolina, that number one overall seed, coming up at 2 Eastern on ESPN. I'm looking at the matchup now. Michigan State really has five guards on the floor, causing Key to have to defend away from the paint. Tar Heels basketball. Don Staley, Jolette Law scouting. See which one of these teams they might face if they get the win later today. You got two coaches having the pin working means there's a lot of information you got to write down. Could learn a lot sitting over there with those two. <laughs> Heels get it back. Must be inside to Key. And she's fouled. Look, Tiani Key only played two minutes in their last game. She has given them really tough minutes today, already at five. With those 15 days off, that's where North Carolina could really instill the value of what Key could bring as they try to make their run in this NCAA tournament. And it has transferred over in this first game. That's a big foul, too, because it takes Moira Joyner off the court with her third foul. And that's a primary score for Michigan State that's got to take a seat. She shoots 43% from three. Hageman thought about the step back. Osmond rejected by Gokting. And North Carolina defending without needing help, that's been key too, so that Michigan State doesn't get you over-rotated to give up the extra pass. Already four blocks for the Tar Heels. Six seconds. Tate trying to spin on Key. Tate had an open jumper as opposed to on the drive. Usby, she looks so good in transition. 10 points. Has not missed a shot, five for five. The efficiency of North Carolina, that right people are taking the right shots and they are running hard downhill in transition. 11 fast break points for North Carolina. They average eight a game. Deja Ke Kelly running the point for North Carolina. She sees the floor. She's got the strength to throw it the length of the court. And she knows Usby's going to be always trying to get out. Well, we talked to her, too, about having to go back and play the point again and not just the two. And she said, look, I'm thinking next level. Right. I'm not just going to be a two guard. I'm going to have to do some other things, too. So she's seeing it as a benefit. If she wants to play at the next level, trying to get a spot in the WNBA to be a versatile guard, that's a huge value. Joyner is in the game for Michigan State with those three fouls. 22 in green. Pick and roll with Gokting. Oh, got her own rebound, but couldn't finish it. Joyner's back in the game. Two seconds. And North Carolina's defense made that a really tough shot. North Carolina can stay with the ball screen action, though, because if you pull a rot out of the lane, it's going to be a small guard in rotation. In and out for Deja Kelly. Meanwhile, a four-minute scoring drought for the Spartans. Tate is just hesitant to take that face-up shot, and she's trying to drive in 
against the size of North Carolina. That's not working out so well. Beautiful move from Maria Gokting. And Robin Freilich is going to call a timeout. North Carolina looking smooth in the first round. Once you get possession, look, let the horses run, and they have done that for North Carolina. The Tar Heels making it look easy in transition. Columbia. The thing that Andrea, the thing that Andrea and Rebecca were talking about is how efficient North Carolina is. Experience, the most recent NCAA experience. It's been a minute since Michigan State has been there, and that experience is showing up in North Carolina's first game. Yeah, this is the fourth straight appearance for North Carolina in the tournament. Meanwhile, Michigan State hasn't been in in two years. Kicking to Joyner. She got it. That's her third three-pointer. What did I tell you in the break? Michigan State was down five threes. They've made one. Can they hit four more before going in at the half? You talk about experience. 37 combined experience games for North Carolina compared to four for Michigan State. Hey, roll. Five points for Julia. No lead is safe when you're playing Michigan State. Donarski shook the defense. Spartans looking to go fast. And a travel on Halleck. First, it was North Carolina running in transition. Now, Julia Arot, she's bringing the pace for Sparty to try to get themselves right back in this thing. North Carolina up nine here late in the second quarter, and the Tar Heels outscoring Michigan State 24 to six in the paint. Let's check out how they're fueling the run. It's brought to you by Wendy's. The presence of Tiani Key and Maria Gottgang getting it done, going in size, using their side, their height advantage, getting on the glass. That's what Michigan State has had to find an answer for, trying to slow down how often the ball goes inside and how much North Carolina has been able to convert to, to, bu to buckets. There you go. Looking at the Spartans right now, Michigan State has trailed by 16 points, but now they've cut it to nine. What's been working lately to get them back in this? Well, the pace has picked up. Yeah. And then also, North Carolina has missed shots, and Michigan State then has come down and found good shots on the other end. Michigan State only scored 10 points in the first quarter. That was a first quarter season low. Kelly over to Usby. See, it's gotten tougher for North Carolina to score in the paint. Halleck is fouled. Theron Halleck is just a bundle of in energy when she comes on the floor. She is going 100 miles an hour from one end to the other. She's got a lot of family pride playing for Michigan State. Her dad, Ty, was a fullback, a tight end, a linebacker for the Michigan State football team. Then he spent eight seasons in the NFL. Her two brothers also played for the Michigan State football team. She had no choice but to play for Sparty. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if she even has any blue in her wardrobe. Absolutely not. <laughs> the Big Ten sixth player of the year. Just the second player at Michigan State to win that award ever. Look, there she goes again. She gambled on that one. That's going to be a turnover. 
But that all started with Halleck. She is playing out in the passing lanes now, not playing any more safe defense. We're seeing that TNT. That's what they call it. Robin Fralick told us when Halleck and Osmond come in off the bench, they're the TNT. That's Osmond at the top, number one in green. Higgeman. Two and a half minutes without points for North Carolina. They're just three of ten from the field in this quarter. Deja Kelly, a pretty shot. Just Ke her first points, though. Kelly just seems to have the answer when North Carolina hits a little bit of a drought. It's Kelly that makes that big play. Well, you mentioned that experience. She certainly got it. Julia Aroll, first team all Big Ten. Don't forget it. Can Aroll take advantage of the size of North Carolina on the bench right now? Tiani Key is waiting to check in for the Tar Heels. Some of that size. Now Michigan State looked to go two for one. Well, that's the that's the third foul on Julia Aroll. So Aroll and Moira Joyner both with three fouls for Michigan State. Yeah, Aroll got that one. I think for the shove in the back when the pass came in, she's got to be disciplined. Let that one go. So she'll take a seat. Abby Kimball will, will replace her. Meanwhile, Tiani Key back in the game for North Carolina in Alyssa Usby's spot. Kelly, smooth, the answer, always. Five points, two assists for Deja Kelly. There's about a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Keep an eye on Joyner, who's on the block right now. Three-point specialist. Did you see her count it? Sure did. Look, North Carolina led by as many as 16 points, but Michigan State cutting it closer. They outscore the Tar Heels 17 to 12 in that second quarter. We'll see if Tori Osmond got this off in time. Oh, plenty oh, of time. Yeah. Plenty of time. So count it for her, 35 to 27 at the half. Back to Dove in the studio with L. Duncan in the game. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One in Columbia, South Carolina. And the North Carolina Tar Heels up thanks to Alyssa Usby. Look at this stat line, 10 points, nine rebounds, four assists. And North Carolina leads Michigan State, 35 to 27 as we get set for the start of the third quarter. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you. The heels were dominant inside the paint. What did you like about what they were doing offensively? Well, India Navar, Navar starting as a guard really opens up the paint and allows the post players to go to work. So you're going to watch. Navar's posting up right now. But after the ball screen on the block, Navar is going to go out to that corner. What does that do? That leaves Maria Gagdang all by herself inside. So as the defense comes out to get Usby, Gagdang is all by herself. That makes it easy. That's why North Carolina outscored Michigan State in the paint by 14, 10 to 24. Well, let's check out today's game track. It's brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Yeah, the paint points you mentioned it, plus 24. Michigan State. Did spark a comeback in that second quarter. They went three of five from three point range, but we got to be careful if you're a Michigan State fan because Moira Joyner and Julia Aralt both have three fouls apiece, and those are key offensive weapons. Those three threes that Michigan State made, yeah. they were made by Joyner. There you go. 
Winner of this game will get either South Carolina or Presbyterian in the second round. We'll see South Carolina, the number one overall seed, coming up at 2 Eastern over on ESPN. And there's Maria Gokdang with the up and in. That's the other area North Carolina dominated in the first half. They were plus 10 on the glass. A North Carolina team that has had 15 days to think about an early exit from their conference tournament. Lost by a point to Miami in the second round. And forcing the turnover here. It's Tate trying to drive in. Well, they're not, they don't need to rotate with help. There's so much length in the paint for North Carolina. She's gonna have to look to pull the trigger on some of those outside shots. See isolation, no double team coming. And you know that Arold has to be careful and not get that fourth foul. How can Michigan State manufacture points offensively? Arold is a threat from behind the three-point line. Gokdang with the shutdown. She is 6'3", long arms. And then she uh, got then gets the rebound on the other end. The hustle. Usby's shot bounces around. Maria Gokdang is everywhere. The transfer from Boston College. They'll swing it to Aralt. But transition is where Michigan State's got to try to find their offense. Usby on the floor. Six seconds now for Deja Kelly. And to the free throw line. That'll be against Dee Dee Hageman. Well, Tahina Pow Pow in South Carolina in the stands watching because they will get the winner of this game pending the results of their game coming up between South Carolina and Presbyterian. South Carolina 32-0. They're the number one overall seed for the third year in a row. And loaded with talent. Don Staley can go 10 deep. Her rotations that she's able to go to can keep fresh bodies on the floor. And when that rotation happens, South Carolina doesn't lose anything. Yeah, that's a big improvement from last year, that huge depth. Also, their outside shooting has gotten a lot better. Tahina Pow Pow has something to do with that. And if you all have not seen Malaysia Full Wiley, the what freshman. What have you been doing if you haven't seen her? She is worth the price of admission. The SEC Tournament MVP as a freshman. First freshman to win that since Candace Parker. Have you heard of her? But you say those. <laughs> if you mention your my name with Candace Parker, that means it's something special. So my agent Full Wiley has got to be excited about that. Osmond over to Tate. Michigan State's had a few good looks under the basket, but haven't finished. 16th double-double of the season for Alyssa Usby. That's the most since 2009 when Jessica Breland did it. Had the same amount. The floor sweeper got to be, be careful on that other end because Michigan State's coming with a fury. <laughs> you got to time your sweeping properly. Gokdang in the paint. Give her 13. She leads all scorers. got six offensive rebounds, too. That's, that's exactly what I was looking at, too. She has been all over the glass on the offensive end. Osmond taking baseline. I think India Navar came over to help. Donarski in transition. Another offensive rebound for North Carolina. 10 offensive boards today for the Heels, and that's a kick ball by Deja Kelly. It was at eye level, and she still kicked it. <laughs> <laughs> that's some athleticism. The main way that Michigan State can get back into this ball game is scoring quickly in transition because it has been so hard to score in the half court against North Carolina. North Carolina is going to take a time out here. 
39-27 here in the third quarter in Columbia, South Carolina. The NCAA Championship Final Four weekend starts April 5th and continues Sunday, April 7th when we crown a champion. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Look, big game, you're playing in the NCAA tournament, but what happens when the draw puts you against one of your really good friends? That's what's going on here. Robin Fralick and Courtney Banghart have been friends for such a long time, and now they are coaching against each other. They actually got both of their, all their kids together last night to go out for ice cream before they locked in for today's game. It was really cool to talk to both of these coaches, and I asked, when did you all meet? And Robin Fralick said it was at a coach's clinic, and they seemed to have kind of a similar philosophy. They were have a hunger to learning more about the coaching profession. They would pick each other's brains, but never I don't think they could have imagined that they would have to face each other in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Yeah, that was back when uh, Robin Fralick was the head coach of Ashland, a D2 school. They won a D2 national championship there. And then she went on to Bowling Green while Courtney Banghart was at Princeton. It's gonna be a travel call. But right now, the friendship has been put aside, Coach Peck, because Michigan State looking for its first NCAA tournament win since 2019. And meanwhile, for North Carolina, they're trying to get back into the second round for a third year in a row. And North Carolina trying to get it done after losing three point guards. Three point guards. And when you lose players to injuries that you felt you were going to be counting on, that makes everybody else stuck step up their game to another level. Yeah, that's going to be an offensive foul on Deja Kelly. On this drive, she got in there and extended her arm. They're going to go take an extra look at this. While they do that, we will step aside, but here is what they are reviewing at the monitor right now. An offensive foul whistled against Deja Kelly as she puts up the arm. Offensive foul on number 25. After the officials went to the monitor, they did upgrade this to an intentional foul, excessive hard, unnecessary contact of an opponent. So anyone on Michigan State's team can shoot two free throws. This went against Deja Kelly of North Carolina. It'll be her second personal, and it does count towards the team foul count. Yeah, I thought that was a little extra curricular activity with the extension of that arm, and specifically with contact made above the shoulders. So Moira Joyner, they have chosen to take the two free throws. Also, Michigan State will get the ball when she is done. One of two for Joyner. Now, can this be a momentum swing for Michigan State? They have only scored one point here in the third quarter. Trailed by as many as 16 today. The Spartans have got to try to find a way to get Gagdang out of the paint. She's made it so hard to get anything easy. Alec taking an opportunity to drive. Man, when she can get going, she is a spark plug. Seven points for Theron Halleck. Navarre. Now before Gagdang can get in the paint, look for an opportunity to score if you're Michigan State. Osman it makes his way over to Joyner, who's guarded by Donarski. Five seconds here. And Michigan State runs out of time. 
Now, moving Maria Gokdang out of the paint is key. You watch Julia Arod, she, as she floats out, gets off the paint, steps out to the short corner. That allows the drive. North Carolina here on a two and a half minute scoring drought. Uspi, powerful move. That's 12 points for Alyssa Uspi. Already has her 16th double double of the season. 12 points, 11 rebounds, four assists. When we talked to her yesterday, she had that look in her eye that she was not ready for this season to be over. Well, she told us uh, the key for them this year is that they had to have two strong leaders with all the injuries they faced. She's taken on that role along with Deja Kelly. Theron Halleck, the big, big 10, sixth woman of the year. Number four in green. Can she take over for Michigan State? She's got four of their five points here in the third quarter. Ospie again out to Kelly. Make some pay. Set leadership. Deja Kelly and Alyssa Usby are leading these Tar Heels today. Key members of what they call the core four. Those two along with Maria Gokding and Lexi Donarski. Osmond short on the reverse. Ooh, that was going to be pretty if that had gone Ooh, down. Know. Joiner the turnaround. Four for four from behind the arc from Mariah Joiner. She came into this game shooting 60% from three over their last five games. She just has to get those opportunities and be able to stay on the floor, not pick up any more fouls. She's got three. Look for number 22 in green. She's at the top of your screen. That's Joyner already with 13 points. First time that she's missed a three today. That one a little off balance. The North Carolina has gone away from the isolation to the post in the paint. You hear the cheers in the arena. That's because South Carolina is exiting to go to the locker room. The fans in Garnet are showing up for that two o'clock game with the number one team in the nation. North Carolina has been in control because of the leadership of Deja Kelly knocking down the three, but Michigan State has some three point shooting of their own. Maura Joyner. Got to get her more touches outside the three-point line. She got into some early foul trouble, picked up three fouls in the first half, but hasn't let it affect the rest of her game. And you can see Robin Freilich is trusting her to be out there. She trusted her to go back out in the first half with those three fouls. Look, she's had to fight to be able to get on the floor to play. She suffered some concussion issues throughout her career. So in a, a player that plays with appreciation to be out there, that's more rejoiner. And a turnover by Hageman. Going back to Joyner, she missed the final 15 games of her junior season with those concussions and was told she probably wouldn't play basketball again. So you know she was excited to hear Michigan State's name called on Selection Sunday. Two things about Joyner. She loves the game of basketball, but she also loves Michigan State. Yes, she does. Tate was battling down low with Key. 
A little too much extra body contact. Third foul against Tate. Almost a three minute scoring drought here for North Carolina. Ooh, the step back. Not going for Donarski. The footwork was great. The follow through, not so much. Michigan, Michigan State scoreless for the last two plus minutes. Stepping into it and misses everything. 7.6 on the clock. Troy Osment will check back in for Michigan State along with Theron Halleck. That substitution for defense. Try to hold North Carolina in these last seven seconds. Deja Kelly. Watching the clock. Tiani Key, baseline, a nice look, but rattles out. 10 minutes to go to decide who moves on to the second round. North Carolina up 44 35. on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you from Columbia, South Carolina. We'll get to see the number one overall seed coming up at 2 Eastern over on ESPN. These two teams, though, playing first here in Colonial Life Arena, looking to make it to Sunday's second round, and North Carolina's been in control most of the game. But it'll be interesting to watch. So they have three of their starters that have played 27-plus minutes. Because of the shortened bench of North Carolina, can Michigan State pick up the tempo and try to put the pressure and the fatigue on the Tar Heels? I will say, North Carolina used to playing those minutes. That's true. Nothing new. They've had to do that because of injuries. And North Carolina, the pressure of Miami in the ACC tournament was what allowed the Hurricanes to get back in the game to pull off the one-point win. What did North Carolina learn from that experience to be able to execute down the stretch? Five seconds for the Spartans. Joyner covered up. Made room for herself with a little bank shot. I mean, barely made that shot just in time. I didn't see the officials give the signal to review that. They credit it to her 15 points. That was close. Joiner. The clock. Oh, oh, it's at zero. She did not get that off in time. They're going to look at that in the next break. They went ahead and counted it for now. Feeding the beast inside, Maria Gokting. Well, North Carolina going back to the isolation of the sitter in the paint. That's what worked so well for them in the first quarter. In the first half, they were plus 14 in paint points. They've got depth there and size. And one thing Michigan State could look at defensively, maybe a box and one, really just worry about Deja Kelly on the perimeter, but try to slow down the production of North Carolina inside. That's going to be a foul against Tori Osment. Well, now for today's Star Stories brought to you by Honda. Moira Joyner with 15 points and Alyssa Usby with an extremely packed stat line. 12 points, 14 rebounds, 6 assists. 
Both of these players are going to have to get it done for their teams down the stretch. Can Joyner get open? More opportunities from three. And then Usby's just done it all over the floor. Baser Kelly can handle that ball now. They were coming after her too. Gokding beat Tori Osmond under the basket. She's got 17. She was only averaging 10 points a game the last three games. But as long as Michigan State is going to give her single coverage, you've got to go inside all day long. Give her the basketball. Osment left wide open. Michigan State's got to think about looking at a zone because North Carolina's gone inside the majority of this game. Second foul on Hageman. Let's see. Key on the baseline, sees the isolation for Gokdang inside. Nobody there, nobody even close to her height in the paint. Maria Gokdang spent a couple of seasons at Boston College. She was a starter both years, but Courtney Bankhart told us we pushed her even more. We needed more from her on every single possession. She's also become more of a rim protector for them, and we've seen that show up today. Three blocks. Two seconds. And a shot clock violation that does not hit the iron. Tori Osmond is a six-year player. She looks, she looks a little defeated right now. Her body language, she is feeling the pressure that her career could come to an end. She's got to pick it up if she doesn't want to be it to be over. And a graduate student out of Buford, Georgia. Stolen away by Deja Kelly. Pulls up over Halleck. Crushed it. Kelly's feeling it. She's playing with confidence. Double figures for her, 10 points. She's one of three Tar Heels in double figures. Aral Bank. That's six made threes for Michigan State. They average nine a game. Well, if Michigan State does not want their season to be over, they got to focus on the defensive end and get stops. Deja Kelly thought better about it. She'll pull it back out. They had a fresh 20 to work with. That's experience. She just knew better. No need to start jacking quick shots. The clock is your friend. Foul on Osment as she runs into Donarski. That'll be her second. Gakting will get a breather as India Navar checks in for North Carolina. The decision of Courtney Banghart to start India Navarre. I think that that was the key decision of the game. Put four guards on the floor, spread the floor, leaving the paint for the bigs. Up ahead to Hageman, finishing through contact. Michigan State ain't done yet. Eight point game. a foul on Hageman, her third. For, for Michigan State to keep chipping away, score before North Carolina can get their defense set. That's one way to get yourself right back in it. You see Moira jo Joyner, she's looking at the clock. That sense of urgency has got to kick in with this last five minutes of this ball game. Five seconds. A speed. Flashing in the paint. A little 
drama on the finish. Back up to a 10 point lead. Foul underneath on Usby. But Alyssa Usby's stat line, 14, 15, and 6. Not bad. Alyssa Usby has been steady Eddie for the Tar Heels. When the shot clock's running down, who do you count on? But Usby to finish things off. Leadership is what it's about in the NCAA tournament if you want to survive and dance. So our score has been updated 52 to 40. They went back and looked at the bucket by Moira Joyner at the 927 mark. And you can see here the ball is still in her hand when the clock hits zero. So that bucket wiped off the board and that's how we got to our updated score here. Look at time now to take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. You gotta give it to Alyssa Ospie, right? She has pushed in transition. She has attacked the paint. She has gotten on the glass. Look, she is responsible either scoring or assisting on 27 of North Carolina's 52 points. Not a bad afternoon. One of these teams moving on to the second round to face either South Carolina or Presbyterian on Sunday. That second game coming up at 2 Eastern over on ESPN. Watching, watching Michigan State practice yesterday, they fly around in that press, forcing turnovers, getting quick outlets in transition. They've not been able to do that today against North Carolina. It's going to be a foul against Jocelyn Tate, her fourth. Melissa Usby scored or assisted on 27 of 52 points for UNC. It's over half. That's the sixth the most team. by a Tar Heel in the past four tournaments. And she was all about business yesterday. When we talked to her after practice, the look in her eye was, let's get this interview done. Yes. Yes, I've got to get back to the hotel, study up, be ready for today. That's a veteran. That's a mentality you have to have in the NCAA tournament. Good luck for Julia Arod up top. Taking a beating down there. See the scratches on her shoulder? You got a call to play for a championship. Apparently Wolverine is also <laughs> playing down low in this game. <laughs> Look, it's tough, it's physical. It we is. haven't seen anything, there's no, nothing dirty, nothing extra. It is part of the women's game. That's they right. are strong women that yes. play this game. And there's no way Julia Aroll wants to come out of this basketball game. No, she didn't want her season to be over. Neither does Alyssa Usby. Goodness gracious. 16 points, 16 rebounds, 6 assists. No ACC player has had 15 points, 15 rebounds, and 5 assists in the tournament since 2000. And Usby doesn't look even winded. No sign of fatigue for number one in white. First foul against Tiani Key of North Carolina. Bounces up and over the top of the backboard. Right out the gate, North Carolina 
from the opening tip, they threw the first punch in this game. They looked aggressive. They only allowed 10 points by Michigan State in the first quarter. Spartans only hit three field goals in that first 10 minutes. I think that it started on the defensive end. They were they demonstrated that they were able to cover Michigan State. Then they were coming down on the offensive offensive end and scoring. That's what you've got to do in the NCAA tournament. Establish yourself defensively. And then the post game with Key and Gokdang and us being inside, that has been tremendous for the Tar Heels. Four seconds here. Kelly has it taken away by Aroll. Short on the first shot, but she'll get the free throws. Third foul against India Navarre. First one is up and good. Well, more first round, first round action coming up to Eastern over on ESPN. Presbyterian, who got their first tournament win all time on Wednesday. They'll meet up with number one undefeated South Carolina here in Columbia. Then at four, Rice taking on Angel Reese and the defending national champions LSU at three seed this year. Both games also on the ESPN app. Now for LSU, remember last year, Poa went down in the semifinals of the SEC tournament. She has been back with the team, hoping to see her in a few minutes at least in the game today. Five seconds. I got to put it up. And North Carolina ran out of time. Michigan State with a timeout here. Well, here's how our portion of the bracket looks. This is the top left quadrant of the bracket. South Carolina, the number one overall seed. We are less than an hour away from seeing them in action for the first time in this tournament. Winner of this game will move on to Sunday in our second round. Michigan State's got some work to do. We've talked about Julia Ayralt from the very beginning. She's leading the Spartans right now with 14 points, nine rebounds. A player that has had to move to the five this year. She missed a couple of seasons ago with a foot injury. She's been through so much, but got to share a really special moment with her mom when the postseason awards came out in the Big Ten. Well, her mom told me that she was at work and one of the media people from uh, Michigan State called Kimberly Arod and said, the awards are about to come out. So she scrolled through on her phone and then she saw that her daughter was first team all Big Ten. So she calls Julia and says, what are you doing? Julia was on her way to Best Buy to get some earphones, something for her earphones. It's like, what's going on? And she said, did you see the news? And she hadn't. So her mom got to break the news to her that she had made first team all Big Ten. And it was so rewarding because she's had to fight back from injury. She scored single digits last year, only almost three rebounds a game. And to make that increase in this season was so rewarding. Her hard work, determination, it paid off. And when they asked her to move to the five, she said, yeah, whatever I got to do for my team. So her mom, Kim, watching in the stands. And her mom said to me, it's never been about awards. For Julia, she, all she cares about winning. So when this came, it was so unexpected. Unex, she said they were both got so emotional with receiving that accomplishment. Such a cool story. Halleck cutting to the basket. Look, Still plenty of time for Michigan State here. Absolutely, if they can get stops. But what they have got to do, Michigan State, on a missed shot from North Carolina, they got to keep them off the glass. That's going to be a foul against Halleck as she collides with Usby. First one on Theron Halleck.
So Usby will go to the free throw line. A minute 17. North Carolina looking to get to the second round for the third straight season. Must be just a 58% free throw shooter. That'll be something to keep an eye on. If Michigan State can come down and score foul quickly, Usby's who they want to put at the line. That's what I just talked about. Rebounding, Michigan State, that hurts really bad on a missed free throw. You got to come up with that rebound. When do you start fouling if you're Michigan State? You could start now. I mean, you want to lengthen the game, especially if Usby gets the ball. Two seconds on the shot clock. They get a defensive stop. So 56 seconds now. Michigan State down eight. They still have two timeouts, but they, they need to go score quick, quick strikes. But they have the ability to shoot the three. And Moyer Joyner is at the bottom of your screen, number 22. And that's going to be a foul on Didi Hageman from behind the three-point line against Lexi Donarski. Hageman, a 75% free throw shooter. Now, North Carolina, they have three timeouts. Would you use one here if you're North Carolina? If I'm North Carolina, I do. I want to get the ball away from Michigan State's basket. Even if the further distance you can, if there were a mistake to happen, have a turnover, I want it closer to my basket than theirs. In the women's game, you can use a timeout under a minute to advance the basketball. Maria Banghart's going to let them inbound it. And Michigan State can bring that full court pressure. And now Banghart uses the timeout. So she was able to get that timeout called before the ball was inbounded, so she will be able to advance this, and she does. And she wants to take the ball out on her side of the floor. I think she wants to be able to inbound it so that her ball handlers can get it and go drive hard to the right side of the floor. But if you're Michigan State, what you're trying to do now is you're trying to get a five-second call, if at all possible. You're going then for the steal, and if you don't get the steal, you got a foul right away. Any foul by either team will put the opponent at the free throw line. It's a 7-0 run for Michigan State right now. They've trailed by as many as 16. You got to know that North Carolina has in the back of their mind their last game when they lost to Miami in the ACC tournament by a point after they led by 14 points. Not only did they lose by a point, North Carolina had three opportunities. Yes to win that game, and they, they just weren't able to get over the hump. Can they hang on here and get to the second round? India Navarre to inbound. To Donarski, and now you would expect Michigan State to foul right away. You got a foul. They get a steal instead up ahead to Hageman. Hang on. Got a foul again? Yeah. Oh. Deja Kelly down right now. Tori Osment is going to be whistled for that foul. That was an unexpected collision. Deja didn't really have a way to brace herself. Let's take another look at it. I don't think there was anything intentional there. The foul on, was on green number one. The play is under review for an intentional foul. So an intentional foul, not a legitimate attempt to make a direct play on the ball, contact to negate an opponent's advantageous position. 
excessive, hard, unnecessary contact of an opponent. I think she was trying to go after the basketball. Well, yeah, and I don't think it was intentional, the collision yeah. that happened. I think that that was just inadvertent contact that the two made. So it was called a personal foul against Tori Osment, her third. So they will go back and look at this play. They will also double check the clock as they go through this review. Currently showing 30.6 seconds. North Carolina up three. I don't believe that this should be upgraded. I think it should just be a common foul. And, and Jenna Cross will give us that answer right now. The common foul on number one for Michigan State will remain. Two shots from number 25 for North Carolina. So Deja Kelly will be the one shooting two. And you saw Tori Osment come over to Deja Kelly and check, said, are you okay? She didn't intend to do it. Yeah. Deja Kelly is 0 for 4 from the free throw line today. Usually a good free throw shooter at 71%. That was big. When the game's on the line, Deja Kelly's going to be money. You would expect Michigan State to call a timeout and advance it? Yeah, absolutely. You've got to get possession of the ball. You can't try to advance it before you call that timeout. And she dribbled before Robin Fralick got the timeout called, so they cannot advance it. Now, if you try to make a pass or advance the basketball and call timeout, you have to take it out from where the ball was, where the timeout was called. So Tori Osment started dribbling, and then Robin Fralick called the timeout. That prevents them from advancing the basketball. So instead, they'll have to go the length of the floor with 29.8 seconds left, down by four. So now what North Carolina's got to do is they got to make sure that any of Michigan State's players have to come back to get the basketball. You don't want to get thrown over the top. You also don't want to have so much pressure on the ball that you get beat and have, get over rotated. For Michigan State, now you've got to get, number one, you've got to get the ball in, and you've got Hageman that can go with quickness. You get the ball to her. She doesn't have to necessarily have a, a pull up for the three, but she's got to go with the first possible basket possible. Here's Hageman. Moira Joyner is at the bottom of your screen. She is one of their top scorers today. Back to A-Roll. Driving in on Key, who gets the block. So now 18 seconds showing on the shot clock. How big has Key been in her minutes today? And I mean that literally. Tiani Key, five points, six rebounds. They're double checking the clock right now. It's currently showing 18.5. Play is under review for timing. So maybe add a second back on. They'll give us the official word here. Yesterday in practice, how many underneath out of bounds plays did Robin Freilich draw up? and they were scoring on all oh, of them yeah. for three. It was the situation. Oh, we set to 19.3 and 19 on the shot clock. But the situations that, that she took her team through prepared them for this situation right now. They need four points. They've only got 19 seconds to do it. Osment cutting to the basket. There's a start. And now Courtney Banghart will use her timeout. She can advance it if she wants to. This was one of the ones that they ran yesterday. A lot of movement with shooters popping out and a curl around. Osmond curls around Joyner and is wide open for the two. Oh, that's a great, 
great execution there to get an open two and then able to jump right to right into the press. So each team now with one timeout as North Carolina uses their second to advance the basketball. Michigan State trailed by as many as 16 points. But they have clawed their way back into this game. They're on an 11 to one run. Well, Lexi Donarski fouled Hageman. She hit three free throws and then the steal. And again, Hageman with two that was able to cut into the lead. Osmond on the underneath out of bounds for the easy, easy two and Michigan State just down two right now. 18.5 on the clock. You would expect them to foul immediately if they don't get a steal or a five second call. Michigan State has not won an NCAA tournament game since 2019. North Carolina trying to get back to the second round for a third year in a row. I don't put anybody on the ball. I make Alyssa Usby catch the basketball. She's the lowest free throw shooter on the floor right now. You also have a double team. You have an interceptor from the person who's taken the ball out. If you're Michigan State, you're trying to do everything you can to get that steal, but nobody right now has Key in the backcourt. Well, that's where they'll go, over to Tiani Key. She'll wait for help up to Navarre. Michigan State running out of time. They got to go foul. 12.6 on the clock when Tori Osment fouls Lexi Donarski. Tiani Key was in the backcourt. Michigan State didn't know she was back there. Donarski, the transfer from Iowa State. First trip to the free throw line today. You saw her numbers. Now Michigan State does have one more timeout. I think you got to use it right here. Two possession game. Robin Freilich this time calls it before the inbound. She can advance. That's her final timeout. 12.6, down by four. Now, Michigan State, they have got to, number one, get the ball in. But you've got to look for the three. You've got three-point shooters. Lexi Donarski fouled previously on a three-point shot. That's one thing Courtney Banghart is talking to her team about. Do not foul a three-point shooter. A two cannot beat you. Lexi Donarski, though, pretty big free throw. She just hit back to back. She was cool on the cucumber. She's been there before. She if there's not, anybody you want there at the free throw line, it is Donarski. She hasn't missed a free throw since January 28th. I strategically did not say that before because I didn't want to be the one to jinx her. You scared? It was on the screen. You can't be scared in the NCAA <laughs> tournament. You got to be fearless. I want to let you know if you're looking for MTSU and Louisville, they're playing right now over on the ESPN app. We'll get you there as soon as we're done here. Moira Joyner to inbound for Michigan State. They need four points. And look for Joyner's one of their better three point shooters. She give it up. Look for her to possibly get it back. They'll swing it to the corner to Halleck. In the corner pocket! Down by one. And Courtney Banghart will use her final timeout. Farron Halleck, the Big Ten sixth player of the year, with a monster shot. She has been the spark plug all day. You see Halleck at the top of the key. She wants it. She's over there. She knows she's by herself. It took a couple of passes to get there, but on the rotation, just enough time to bury it. Now the under review. They're looking at the timing here. She was ready for it.
making sure the right amount of time is on the clock. I'd say 5.3, yeah. They Ooh. put 5.4 on the clock is what it's showing right now. So it's when the ball clears the net. They've got 5.4 on the clock. Neither team has a timeout. But they're Again. leaving key is by herself down underneath Michigan State's basket. And Robin Fralick just pointed it out. So Arol has moved over there. Nobody on the ball. And Hageman is going to foul before it gets in. So no time comes off the clock. And Deja Kelly will have free throws coming. But Michigan State does not have a timeout to advance the basketball. So make or miss, Michigan State's got to go quick. And these free throws, big time for Deja Kelly. She's just one for six today. Oh, that's big. On to make, North Carolina's got to make sure they don't get beat over the top. Two-point game. Tar Heels get it back. And Michigan State has to foul 3.2 on the clock. Kelly will get the chance to do it again. The leader, the do-it-all player for this North Carolina team, trying to get them back to the second round. Up to a three-point game. Three ties it, but North Carolina gets it back. No chance for Michigan State. Usby with a big rebound. North Carolina on to the second round. It wasn't without drama, but they will take it. We told you Alyssa Usby was going to give you that blue collar, tough nose mentality, summed up in the very last play. And the area where North Carolina separated themselves, offensive rebounds, 18 to six. And look at Usby, still in the deal with that offensive rebound. Third straight 20 win season for North Carolina. It'll be their third straight second round appearance. They will get the winner of South Carolina and Presbyterian coming up in about 30 minutes. But for now, let's get you to MTSU and Louisville.